part of the 2012 Heart of the City Festival, John Atkins, Strathcona resident, civic historian, and author, led a tour titled The Tour of Nothing, The Freeway That Never Was. John covered what's been lost, including a big chunk of Vancouver's Chinatown, what wasn't built, the freeway, and the tale of why it all happened. It's quite a nice little green space. Um, you might notice that we have this lovely curve that comes around the public housing project, and there's a fairly generous boulevard that goes up that way. So what we're doing is still standing in the middle of a legal road right-of-way. This has never been dedicated as anything other than roads. So if you pull the legal maps at the City of Vancouver off of their van map website and go to this corner, you'll see that Union takes a lovely turn right through here, and the right-of-way takes in all of that. So this was the connector road, one of them, to come off of the uh, eight lanes of freeway, four lanes into town, four lanes out of town, plus Union and prior as feeder roads as well. And the connector coming off of here, turning this way, going up through Gore that way, down to uh, the waterfront freeway, and then connecting with it that way. So and then there would be a number of little tentacles off of that uh, heading off into other parts of, of the uh, northern piece of the city. So this was then expropriated uh, back in the 1960s in preparation for that, as was all of the blocks that were walking up through uh, for public housing. Because one of the things that's interesting here is that we often try to separate the urban renewal in Strathcona and the freeway, because they run different timelines. By 1969, urban renewal in Vancouver and in Canada was basically killed off. Um, the uh, Chinatown representatives here, the CBA and others, had gone to Calgary for a big meeting of Chinatown representatives from across Canada, plus an honorary delegation from Africaville and Halifax. And at that meeting in 68, they figured out and found out that all federal urban renewal funds had been targeted at every Chinatown across Canada. And because there wasn't the Chinatown in Halifax, they got after uh, the black population. So this little discovery uh, was interesting because what it did was put the federal government on notice that uh, we're on to you. And at that conference, the new uh, housing minister, Robert Andrus, uh, was sort of shocked to discover this. And so came out to Vancouver at the behest of the brand new Strathcona Property Owners and Tenants Association who then came out here and looked at the devastation through this neighborhood and went, holy crap, this is crazy. What the hell are we doing as a government? Went back to Ottawa and wrote a report that said, this is nuts, kill the urban renewal program. And that's what happened. So 69 is when urban renewal comes off the table. The last gasp of the freeway system was about 71, 72. Um, now, what's interesting is, this connector road was still very much a feature of the plan, uh, but, as the urban renewal program got killed, that took the teeth out of some of the freeway planning, and Chinatown suddenly came off the table. So that whole Carroll Street nonsense suddenly disappeared. The freeway options now are Georgia Viaduct, Pacific Boulevard, and the trench through the west end along Thurlow Street. 35 feet deep, 12 lanes wide, livable west end? No. But so that was the new plan. Um, over officials from 1910 right through until the 1960s had a hate on for Chinatown. And in the expropriation report that resulted in this expropriation and all of the expropriation that way, uh, this is a 1958 report and it actually says in one of the lead paragraphs, we are expropriating the first 15 blocks of the East End, comma, shall we call it Strathcona after the school, end comma, because of the high Chinese concentration of Chinese ownership. And then it goes on in slightly less subtle language about taking the lifeline of Chinatown and basically severing it. So all of these folks will go to Skeena Terrace. Skeena Terrace is on Boundary Road. The goal was if everyone's out there, then nobody shops in Chinatown and then Chinatown's ready to go because then we can actually redevelop that. Now, what's interesting is we get a flip where business owners are now complaining about the freeway. The uh, Building Owners and Management Association, BOMA, they start complaining about the freeway. Uh, we get the Gastown folks 
Uh, the newly minted hippie entrepreneurs down there complaining about the demolition of Gastown. The Chinese merchants, along with the CBA and every other organization, are now uh, on the city's case and the province. And the newly minted SPOTA is also playing in now a huge role. 600 residents showed up at the initial meeting to start the association. Uh, 600 folks is a massive chunk of people to show up to say, yeah, let's start a new organization to stop the urban renewal and the freeways. You've got to stress, the city was a very different place. From 1967 backwards, it was a nasty parochial little town, and city officials were some of the most racist people you'd ever meet. Uh, we had a councillor, Harford Wilson, who um, had been on council forever, and one of his relatives had helped lead the... Uh, March through Chinatown in 1907 that busted up the Chinatown and things. In 1958, he's on council still trying to get clauses into the development around Oak Ridge to allow no colored people. Right? This is his mindset. And not everyone on council in 58 told him to get lost. By 62, everyone told him to get lost. But there's still that current that runs through things. And this is a product of that, that this was targeted not because it was actually in dire need of renewal, um, but it was targeted because of its Chinese ownership. The other thing is our Sikh neighborhood, which was over around 2nd and Burrard, uh, that all got expropriated for one of the connector roads, and the connector road makes no sense going over there, but it was the Sikh population, so that that's why the road suddenly went through there. Now I have a delightful quote, because you have to understand Mr. Campbell, and why he was so well loved by the citizenry. <laughs> because uh, his quote, Tom Campbell says that the defeat of the freeway was because, well, it was sabotaged by, quote, commies, Maoists, pinkos, left-wingers, and hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> and when a news reporter said, excuse me, well, what's a hamburger? All those people that don't have degrees. <laughs> and that really sealed his fate because that quote got into the paper, got onto the news, and because he saw the public as so dismissive, that, that ended his career. And when he did resign, he basically never surfaced again in public life. He just died a couple months ago, but he never surfaced again in public life. The last incident uh, that I'll mention with him is telling, too, because the viaduct opens in 72. There are massive protests uh, because this is still protesting. The, even though the freeway is pretty much dead at this point, there's still that lingering ghost. There's massive protests, and uh, the limo that uh, is carrying uh, Mr. Campbell to um, the, the banquet to celebrate the opening of this, um, drives through the crowd and drives through it at not a great speed. It, it goes through fairly fast and uh, it clips a few folks and things like that. My friend Michael Gluckner was in the crowd and uh, just about got clipped as well. And a couple of years ago he was doing an article and he, he had to meet Campbell and, and interview him. And so the whole thing had been set up with careful parameters and everything else. But right at the end he just said, you know, I gotta ask this. You can tell me to go away, but I gotta ask this. I was in the crowd on the Vida, your car came through, I just about got injured badly. What the hell were you thinking? And without batting, Michael says, without batting an eye, without even thinking anything, he just said, the Bayshore had a really good luncheon and we were late. <laughs> oh. I think that sums the guy up perfectly. Things have changed within the city of Vancouver, um, and I think that's one of the things that the provincial government, the former Highways Minister Mr. Falcon didn't get is that cars are not the be-all end-all and we've built a huge amount of road infrastructure and then we forgot to put the buses uh, you know on the bridges and things like that. The thing is that new freeway is going to come right up to Boundary Road and First Avenue and that's where it stops because the city of Vancouver has for its engineering department um, the equivalent of an ordinance that basically says you can work with the flow of traffic there is no increase in the capacity on, of the roads. So you, you cannot suddenly widen the road for more cars. And so that freeway is going to be one of those things. 40 years from now, we're going to be standing around in something like this, out there going, see this really big road? And see how it stops there, right? That's, I think it's going to be one of those whoops. And they should have learned that. The walk ended at the former home of the Chan family, leaders in the fight to stop the freeway to coincide with this Bauta mosaic unveiling. Thank you very, very much. And congratulations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Stay up here. Stay up here. Uh, yeah. I'm going to, going to read, the read the names. So I'm just going to... Uh, 
step out back here. So it says on the mosaic, Spoda was founded in December 1968 by Alhong, Walter Chan, Wu Sung, Mary Chan, Shirley Chan, Gary Kahn, Louise Fong, Mike Harabuk, Bessie Lee, Jay Lee, Mrs. Sam Lung, Su Lung, Su Yan Ma, Tom Message, Fred Soon, Penelope Stewart, Wang Yong, William Yi, and founding supporters Maurice Egan, Mike Harcourt, Yunyo Zhang, Jonathan Lau, Joanne Lee, Lillian Luke, Darlene Marzari, Margaret Mitchell, David Skeering, Joe Wei, 